Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So you saw my recent videos, we went ahead and upgraded my golf cart here to lithium iron phosphate batteries. During that install, I was trying to put in my gauge for the amps and to monitor the batteries, but I ran into a little bit of hiccup, so I had to do that on a separate video. So on today's video, we're gonna go ahead and put in this new battery meter. This is a more advanced battery meter than your cheap like $10 ones that you find on Amazon. So stay tuned. <music> So in today's video, we're gonna be putting in this Linux right here color display, which measures your amp hours and your capacity and everything on your battery. And this is a more advanced meter than the one that just sits between your terminals. This one actually sits in line with your negative terminal using the shunt block right here. So it actually measures the current going through it and it'll give you a real time display and it also keeps track of your battery, the voltage, the capacity and everything between charge so you know when to optimally charge your battery. So on that previous video I got this shunt block installed but when I went to tighten down these terminals I ended up busting this thing right here this plexiglass so now we're stuck with this broken plexiglass I'm gonna go ahead and just go return this to the original seller since they sent me a replacement and this thing will go back to them after I'm done with this install but as you can see if I really wanted to I could have just 3d printed a new cover on the back here to fix this but since it was brand new I figured I wanted this plexiglass to mount to that block that I built as far as in installing it into here I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this spot right here basically mount it right here where the cup holder is into the safety information screen right here and I'm just gonna go ahead and just cut this and leave this thing partially like that or I don't know if I should just do it in the middle maybe I think the middle might be a better spot for it but either way I'm just gonna mount it to this little panel right here as far as just install of this block it's pretty basic you basically just mount it to the backboard there and then you put the battery side negative onto here and then the cart side negative onto the other side side so it sits in series with it in addition all it needs is a battery positive to this terminal right here on the left to the positive of this guy and it knows when it's on and when it's off and when it's drawing battery and current so that's what all you have to do right here and then you run that plug right here to that screen up front and that's pretty much about it so last time I had that problem of actually trying to tighten this thing down with this thing in the plexiglass and once that pressure on the plexiglass was too much it just ended up snapping so what I'm going to do is actually remove these four screws right here that hold the plexiglass to the actual PCB tighten that thing down and then put the plexiglass on afterwards that way I'm sure my wires are all bolted down nice and tight and then we don't break this thing so I took that plexiglass off so the first thing I gotta do is tighten down this cable right here which is for the battery side so this thing connects to the battery lead and then the other side connects to the actual cart I'm about to tighten the cart one over there and then just bring all this stuff back over there near the cart and tighten it down over there so I tighten this thing down as much as I could off the plexiglass so now I'm going over here this cable right here is this is the ground wire for the voltage converter right here so I'm gonna connect that I gave it a little bit more slack than I had last time so I think so I actually put the cart ground onto here and tighten that down as much as I can before I do that plexiglass side If you just saw me crimping that wire on here, I found this coolest tool on Amazon right here. This is a OBM type crimping tool that gives you like really cool OEM crimps. I just did that right here with a double sided crimp because I didn't want to solder. It basically created a freaking perfect OEM style crimp right there like on cars and stuff. But dang, this thing is awesome as hell. And it's a very secure connection. It clamps the wire and it clamps the insulation too. So I'm just gonna put some heat shrink over this one. You need the same tool. I'll have a link to it down in the description right here. But this thing is freaking awesome. You could buy this and then you could buy a lot of different connectors or OEM pens and connectors for harnesses. Got that baby in there, connected up to the battery, connected the power right here, which I had already set that up before on my last install. I connected the ground right here for the converter right here. This is the 36 to 12 volt converter. If you guys haven't seen my install of this lithium iron phosphate setup right here, go check out the video right up here in the link above. And also at the end of this video, so you can actually see what I did on here, this whole setup. You can see how you could do this yourself for the cheap. 
So before we move forward with it and do the permanent install, I'm gonna test this thing out right now just by plugging the harness in. I've got it already plugged into that side. So right now I'm seeing it's kind of just going through. It says 100%, but I know I'm not at 100%. So the initial setting of this is pretty basic. Once you fully charge the batteries, you just hold the up arrow for three seconds to set the 100%. And then once you drain it down to nothing, then you hold down the down arrow for three seconds and it'll set the 0% and that way it gives you a gauge of 100 to 0% when you need to charge it. So you actually have to cycle these things at least one time to get it 100%. Otherwise, there's more features on the next page of here that you can set. So pretty much the settings on here include just the capacity, the LED brightness, uh, the standby time, and then the turn off time, the current. I guess once after a certain amount of time, it just reduces to low current. And then a few other things right here, like the backlight color, uh, the alarm, and a few other things right here you could read. So I went ahead and marked the, with a pencil the outline that I need to drill. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use a hole saw right there and just drill two holes or three holes depending on how many I need. And then after that, I'll just use like a reciprocating saw or something. So we'll go ahead and cut a square or a rectangle to fit the thing perfectly into that hole once we drill the holes out. Using a reciprocating saw and a hole saw made quick work of this hole. The fine tuning and trying to get it perfect around the edges is what's gonna take a while. I'm about to go get a file and just work the file and just get this thing straight. Pretty good right there. This thing fits right now top, bottom, and side. So I'm gonna go ahead, run the wires, make all the connections before I push this thing in there to make it clip in. I've got the cart up here on the lift so I can actually run the wire. This is totally extra. It's not something you really need to get to the wiring. I just wanted to do it because I don't want to break my back laying on the floor since I already have this max jack lift right here. If you guys haven't seen my video on installing this max jack in the garage, go ahead and check that one out. I'll have a link at the end of the video and up in the corner right now. But yeah, this thing comes in handy with all my car work and all my do-it-yourself work. See, I've got this loom right here. This is where the factory harness, I'm gonna go ahead and just run that harness through that loom all the way back there into the shunt thing and then we'll go ahead and finish this up. So the other side, the hole was too hard to get the wire through so I actually found another hole right here. It's just the opposite same punched hole but on the opposite side that we can go ahead and fish it through so I'm just gonna run the wire across. Got all the wire management nice there. Get the loom joining with the original loom here, going underneath, going into the battery area right there. So I'm gonna go ahead, lower the cart down and work on the inside of it just to get that thing pulled through. All right, as you can see, we could pull it right there underneath that hole that we fished it through. Just pull out the whole harness and then we'll go ahead and just route this through and then take care of it inside the bay here and just do some wire management. All right, got all the wire management done. As you can see, you could pull it right through there. Come up here, I wrapped it all up, loomed it right there, plugged it right in. So go ahead and put this thing back together and we're finished here. We got this baby all up and running. As you can see, it automatically goes dim when it's just sitting here for a little bit but you just hit any of the buttons and it comes back on, but everything looks pretty good. Once I do a full charge and a full drain, I'll go ahead and set those two options. Uh, as far as the display and all that, I'll play with that using the instructions just to get everything dialed in the way I like it. But overall, pretty straightforward and easy install. Hey guys, thanks for joining me all the way to the end of this quick video on getting that gauge installed for my EasyGo golf cart. With these new lithium batteries is a huge upgrade for this cart as far as performance. This thing goes fast 
now, it constantly goes 12 to 13 miles an hour. The off the line acceleration is great and I'm not worried about this thing running out of batteries anymore. I, I've gone like three or four days without charging this thing and it's ran perfectly fine. So now with this gauge, I can gauge when the battery actually goes down all the way and then I don't know exactly when to charge. Anyways, if you guys found this video useful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to your channel, go ahead and subscribe to your channel to stay on top of all my different DIY videos. Remember guys, for all these different projects, if I can do it, you guys can do it. I want to thank you for watching and I'll talk to you guys next time.